Hey, welcome back to day two of CDS, the uh, day 2.1, the uh, island of OSD. <laughs> so uh, here we are with the first session, which is the discussion about erasure coding pool overwrite support. Um, and Sam, you want to take it away? All right. So when we went ahead and implemented erasure coding uh, last year or whenever we did it, um, we made a choice to limit the interface to uh, <clears throat> append only and X adders and delete. Basically, the things that we can roll back easily without needing to stash a bunch of extra information. Uh, so that's that works very well for the base tier in a cache tiering situation. It works well for Redis GW. It works abysmally for uh, RBD, since you need to be able to do partial overwrites with RBD. Um, so there's been some noise about trying to create or trying to add overwrite support to erasure coded pools so that you can run RBD directly on an, over, on an erasure coded pool without needing either a cache tiering solution, which doesn't work that well for RBD either, or uh, needing to put up with 3x replication for your uh, VM images. So the short version of the reason why we didn't do this to begin with is that unlike a RAID controller, we can't um, we, we, we can't just use a battery-backed, you know, uh, NVRAM thing to make sure we don't lose the updates. <clears throat> so as I see it, there are sort of two sorts of approaches to how we do this. Either we apply the update in place and atomically maintain a rollback log with the old data, or we journal ahead and then apply the update in place once all um, replicas have committed it. We'll call those the rollback log and two-phase commit approaches. So the rollback log would be an extension of what we already do. And the way it would work is when you accept a write, you read the corresponding data from the file or from the object and you create a transaction that writes that data to a write aside log atomically with the update you write into the data into the object uh, the this is this requires first a read of the object of uh, well of the relevant piece of the object either we send the data to the primary and the primary packages the rollback information in the repop or each replica when it receives the transaction performs it locally either way we still need to read the object before we can perform the write mm -hmm. this in this adds some additional complications like with pipelined writes you can't just read the object since it might have a pending write on it and you need the most recent logical version of the object not simply whatever happens to be on disk so this implies that we'll need to buffer any unstable portions of the disk or of the object in the OSD all of which is kind of doable but the rollback log does require a double write in that we need to write whatever it was we were going to write to the object and then also to the rollback log, just the old version. So the other option is the and two reads in a write or yeah. two writes in a read. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the, the other option is the two phase commit approach, which at first blush seems worse because we need to perform two commits and they're dependent, but we can reply to the replica or we can reply that the write is complete when all um, replicas respond with a with a prepare. So once all replicas are prepared, we know the the write won't be rolled back and we can reply with success as long as we make sure that it's uh, that any reads are blocked until the write is committed. So there's no need to perform a read for this one, but we do need two messages to the client to the clients even though or to the replicas even though only one of them is required for the actual commit. Um, and it also requires a double write. Unlike the rollback log though, if the file store does support an efficient clone range, we could perhaps clone range from the write ahead log into the object. Mm -hmm. Though in reality, this is kind of just pushing the problem down to the file system, which may or may not have a way of doing that without fragmentation. So maybe. Uh, let's see. Significant piece that I haven't gamed out here is that this changes the semantics of the PG info to include a, so right now the PG info has a last update, which is just sort of correct. Based on the last updates you get from the replicas, you determine what the current authoritative state of the OSD is, of the placement group is during curing. 
This adds another piece, which is the sort of last update prepared versus last update committed, um, with the notion that the versions between last update prepared and last update committed, we might or might not choose to include, um, depending on which mm -hmm. replicas have which values. So peering would need to be extended slightly. I don't actually think it's that hard. Yeah, it doesn't seem. I, it doesn't I, I seem don't think we already we already do kind of. We already have the rollback logic in there, so it'd just be basically tracking on an extra field. Exactly, yeah. But I mean, the rollback stuff is sort of, it's almost trans transparent to peering. Yeah, yeah. This is a little different. And I, I think you're right, though. I don't think it actually makes a big difference. Incidentally, both of these, both the two-phase commit and rollback log only actually work the way I've described if they're aligned. If they're not aligned, or if the writes are not full stripe aligned, then you still need to perform a read modify write. Uh, that's probably a, a a livable restriction, though, since RBD can always choose to write out pages or whatever. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think that actually poses a problem. Is that is it actually um, a good idea or practical to have erasure codes that are aligned to 4K, 4K stripes? No, no, like, no, no. I mean, seems I like mean, an awfully small. What I what size. I mean is RBD al already has an alignment that it chooses to deal with, and it can just choose to deal with a bigger one if that makes it happy. So when it performs a read, it always reads whatever the necessary stripe size is, which would be bigger than 4K. Mm -hmm. Oh, are, are you arguing that it would be Im impractically large? I'm saying that if you if you just configured your EC stripe so that it actually, a, four, a stripe was 4K, then uh, every IO is always going to be 4K aligned because that's the block device block size. I sort of doubt that that's practical, but yeah, I also but... don't actually know. Loic would know. Loic here? Yeah. Someone Imagine. someone actually did the benchmarking to find out how how small stripe size you can get before um, J erasure starts getting noticeably slower. So mm -hmm. there is a number, and if it's as small as 4K, then you're right. If it's bigger, then that's a trade-off. Yeah. Yeah. Wish it. I, I, I think it must be in a mailing list thread from last year. Yeah. Someone actually did the numbers. It's done. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So. Um, Option three is kind of my favorite approach, which is don't support override at all. Um, we get a lot now. of it. Well, hang on. I'm I'm I'm, I'm saying so. Okay. Both okay. both both advantages or both approaches above also torpedo the way we do uh, checksumming for erasure coded pools. So append only has this nice property that you can just maintain a checksum for each of the shards, and you always know which one is correct during scrub, which I like. If we go to this sort of approach, then we'll have to maintain checksums at a granularity of whatever the minimum stripe size or uh, write size is, which is sort of a bummer to me. Mm -hmm. um, also, any way we roll it or any any way we structure it, it's going to perform worse than appends. It will be more expensive. Um, so the question is, can we get this? Can might it be possible to support RBD? Without, um, without supporting partial overwrites. So one way we might consider the, doing this is by changing the way RPD lays out its its data into some form of let's say four four megabyte block, which is essentially immutable plus a journal of pending updates. We can also update the RBD OSD class to uh, do the coalescing. So when when RBD for when, our, our, our RBD would have to always choose to read full full blocks, but the OSD could do the job of reading the block and the updates, coalescing them and sending back a single block back to the back to RBD. RBD would then send small writes in the form of these incremental updates to the OSD until it hits a full um, or until it hits some heuristic that says it's time to coalesce. And then if RBD actually has the block in memory, it can just flush the whole block. Or mm -hmm. we could choose to expand the OSD class infrastructure to give the OSD the ability to um, spawn a an, uh, an additional operation after a write that reads the object, coalesces it, and rewrites it back out, which I think might actually be an interesting capability to add to the OSD anyway. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Are you considering that the file system is going to be doing syncs and things above RBDs that you really can't avoid? Yeah, so those those little updates get a, get appended to the to the blocks. So you 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 you, you still pers persist them. You just don't write out the whole block unless it crosses some threshold where it's worth the effort. 
Oh, okay. So the the data is still persisted. It just it's just persisted in a non-strict format, which doesn't yeah. require us to do an overwrite quite so often. Yeah. But this every is, once in a while, you're going to have to take this whole big, you know, not just four megs, but it's going to be like 12 megs or whatever, how long you let your journal accumulate. You have to like read the whole thing and rewrite. Yeah. Right, so that's 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 the cost. Um, the reason why I think this might be viable is because there's an, a there's a paper from Microsoft from a couple of years ago, and this is exactly how they implemented their erasure coded block device thing. They have in, oh, right. immutable append only blocks, and they have this uh, log structured block device, but not unlike a uh, flash translation layer, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, somewhat unlike a flash translation. Okay, very unlike a, a flash translation. Layer. More <laughs> like what I'm what I'm just. just yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. What anyways, I'm so, yeah. Yep. An approach like that might 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 be viable. It's not clear. On the other hand, it's mm -hmm. also easier to prototype than it's like much easier to prototype than yeah. Yeah. the rollback log and two-phase commit approaches. Yeah. I mean, basically, the only change would be to make the RBD client call RBD write instead of write, and then to make all the other, all the rest of the code is going to be in that RG, RBD class. Actually, we, we, we can even, um, so we don't really want, for example, Fuse or the Ceph Fuse client to have to implement the same thing. So if we can abstract it into a library, that would really be the ideal thing. That encapsulates the relevant uh, uh, caching. Yeah. But I mean, if, if I'm understanding you, you, right, it's... You, go ahead. Maybe, maybe I misunderstood. This, your, your proposal is to put all of this in the RBD class, right? So the class which is well, when it gets a write, I mean, it would append to its per object log. No, the client, the the actual client side thing needs to uh, cooperate as well, because if the client side thing is already buffering whole objects, we don't want the OSD to read it. We we actually we may want to send it over the wire. I see. It's, uh, it's not clear to me which one of those those is the better strategy, but it seems to me that it's worth avoiding the read. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I, when I when I said the RBD class, I, I think I meant a, a library of fight class that talks to this other library layer. Okay. Which then libRBD talks to. Yeah. That's to I mean because uh, we do, we do, we don't really want every libredos user to have to implement this. I mean, so another piece is that is it is it practical for RBD to to or whatever this thing is to choose to cache object size pieces, and is a four megabyte EC object even a good idea? It might be yeah. too, too too small. Yeah, it's yeah. It kind of seems that way. Anyway, so there there are some other pieces there that would need to be thought about. Hmm. I think it's it. This offers us a much better chance at getting tolerable latencies, though, because both the rollback log and the two-phase commit approaches potentially introduce larger latencies. Yeah. Although, I mean, to be fair, if it is an if it's an append, you don't pay for that. It's only in the overwrite case. I guess there. No, but in the so for yeah. specifically for the RBD case, there are no appends. It's always an overwrite. Yeah. Yep. In other use cases, you wouldn't use this. You would you would structure it so that you had write once objects because it's just easier to do that in Rados anyway. Yeah. Everything's easier to reason about when uh, objects are in, immutable. Oh, and the other catch is that everything I just outlined for liber or for RBD would only work uh, if um would, would only work in the situation where write back caching was appropriate. So you can't have it mounted in two places in synchronous mode. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the that's the part that worries me. Yeah, I don't, because, okay, so with Ceph, the file system, though, you already have exclusive locks on portions of objects. So kind that just works. Sometimes. <laughs> if there happens to be one person, then you... Oh, you know otherwise it, it goes into cache. shared mode and you're screwed? Yeah. Right, oh, okay, exactly. never mind. Right. Yeah. I didn't realize shared mode happened on data extenses as, as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind about that, then. Okay, well, if we actually do, if, if we need to support that, then the primary has to be able to do it. And the primary cannot mm -hmm. very well be buffering whole objects. That's not good. Yeah, and doing, yeah. 
which sort of implies a, an actual partial override approach. That's distressing. Yeah, I mean, even if it's doing this, if it's doing this logging thing, then on any read, it needs to like. Yeah, that's not going to work. Effective. Someone, yeah. someone has to be caching the, uh, yeah. the dirty state, or it's, or it's not a win. Yeah. Just uh, spitballing here. What if you were you could take overwrites in as like a replicated type of operation, and send that out, and then something behind that. Let's just say you had one. Something behind that would re erase your code that and merge it into the. But you'd have to keep track that that's happened, so you can't read and you know without doing that cleanup. That's distressingly similar so. to the cache here. Yeah, or having a cache tier that does partial objects. Just, I mean, that, mm. it, it really feels like a, the cache tier is kind of what you want in, <laughs> in general because you, you're, you know, you're just anything they're writing to, you're just replicating. Except no, that but this it, promotion cost is expensive. Like that's the it, that's the problem. Well, that's that's so that's the thing. It's you're saying accept that the promotion cost is expensive, and I submit to you that for a block device use case, the average case uh, latency doesn't matter. It's the yeah. worst case latency that matters. Yeah. I just don't know that anyone's going to be happy with a situation where they have to pay for a promote for a 4K write. Mm -hmm. Right. What I'm suggesting, it doesn't have promotes at all. No, I know. But it, yeah, so you, what, what, what you're describing is somewhat like taking the logic we currently use for the cache tier, but moving it into the same PG as the base tier. So the, the, the base tier would also handle the replicated tier part. So an object would exist in two pieces, the, rep, the erasure coded piece and any replicated diffs that happen to exist. Mm -hmm. Which isn't a bad approach. Well, uh, actually, that one also pose, poses a bit of a problem because the problem is the reconstruct and read problem. And mm -hmm. if we don't turn the erasure coded object into a replicated object and then update in place, then you still have to read the erasure coded object and the replicated diffs to get back the, uh, the to satisfy the read, which doesn't really help us. Maybe we can do it. Right. Which well, is kind of the, which is not that different than a promote. <laughs> exactly. Right. Which is what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even if even if we were doing, say that we could do these small writes on an EC pool, the write latency on EC is always going to be much higher than on a replicated pool anyway, because you're touching so many more nodes. Right. That's true. Like you'd kind of want to do this right, these rights replicated. Like it feels like the the right quote unquote solution to this is really a cache tier that does partial objects. Like that's the it's it's super complicated, but that's the that's the thing that actually sort of avoids all these problems. It introduces a lot of non-determinism into the read write paths, though. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not sure we should do it, but like, if we were to try to solve this problem, like that seems like the. Let me think about this. So, what if we could flush an object without writing the whole object out? Oh, that's a problem. So, if you do a partial promote, um, you can't flush the whole object. So you, you'd, yeah, you you'd have, have to, to flush diffs. Yeah. Or write to an I object mean, class that was capable of applying the diffs and rewriting the object out. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the way that it would have to work would be that it would, you would accept the partial overwrite in the cache tier, and then asynchronously in the background do the complete promote, and not until you fully promoted it would be able to flush it out again. But you would want to do that anyway. Like, there's not really a case where you do a small overwrite and you wouldn't sort of do the work because you expect there to be another write sometime soon. I'm guessing. 
Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe if you touch that's, one block that's, and <laughs> that's what scares that's... me about block devices. I'm I'm scared about making yeah. actually any assumptions about the workload. Yeah. Because people don't really pay attention when you say that it's a suitable for block device, but only if, you know, it, the workload looks like this. Yeah. I mean the the two phase commit one does have the does have a lot of virtues. It's deterministic, mm -hmm. it's strict. Yep. It yep. does basically what RAID does, so people are used to the costs associated with, with that sort of. Not all of it in this case. Mm -hmm. We only have to buffer unstable objects. Only unstable extents, actually. Which isn't so bad. Um and does it does it really have to be stripe aligned in that case, or can it be? It has to be stripe aligned because you can't rebuild the parity stripes chunks without a full stripe, or a full whatever word is the correct one to describe what I'm saying. <laughs> right, I'm but you can do, sure you can do a read, you can do a read modify right on the primary if it happens to not be aligned. I would argue that that's so inefficient we should propagate it as an error to the client. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, if if the OC doesn't do it, then libRBD will have to do it. Yeah, right? but my my argument is that any any sane client is already buffering some kind of a line size thing. Yeah. And so the only way we would get a, a request like that is because of a bug in the client. In which case, I'd rather propagate an error and have it fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, supporting it requires us to actually build that support in, which sucks. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to do yep, yep. So one thing that uh, that um, might help might help is with the um, mirroring stuff. Um, since we actually have a journal of writes and it's replicated in potentially a different pool, we can actually do the write back from the journal, do the read modify write at that point. I'm wondering the um, so it's not having the extra latency of that read modify write cycle to an EC pool visible to the guest. Oh, mm -hmm. you could just choose to write back full objects instead of writing back diffs? You still write the diffs to the journal, but then when you're writing back those changes to the yeah, actual yeah. RB device, yeah. Yeah, be that would case. also neatly solve the problem. Yeah. This is also something that only works when you're not in synchronous mode. I mean, you have to have some, some local cache. It doesn't have, um, I mean, it doesn't have to be... It's exclusive writer. It has to be an exclusive exactly. owner. Exactly, yeah. 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 That's what I thought. But yeah. that's... That's like every RBD user. That's going to be that's true for, it, it's going to be true for any clever solution anyway. I, I was just making sure. Yeah. Yes, that would also do it. Yeah. Actually, I wonder how well that just works. I mean, how, I don't know, how, how would it be complicated to simply arrange for that approach always write back a full object. I mean that'll work, not today, but as soon as you are with no changes to Rados, it just means that it's yeah. a huge write yeah. amplification if you have small writes. Right. That so doing, might be an acceptable cost reasonable. if you can coalesce them over a long enough. Actually, you can't coalesce them over a very long period of time because the client has to be buffering the yeah unstable objects, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it can't be too big. Okay. So yeah. So probably two phase commit. Still might be worth a try. Stripe unit. I mean, it, it's the same. It just means that the stripe no, is the entire object. Mostly. <laughs> right. Well, mostly I'm, I'm suggesting that the 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 implementation cost of the prototype would be low enough that it might be worth trying. Oh yeah. But, yeah. I don't know if that's true, but yeah. if, if the cost well, it'll is very be, low, then it might be worth just finding It'll out. be very low once RBD journaling is there. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll have to wait a little while. Besides, it might actually amplify writes less than a 3x uh, replicated pool. Hmm. Right, to get, the, to get the same durability with like a 6.3 code. Well, 6.4 code, I suppose. You're only multiplying writes by 1.4, you know, just for the write itself, whereas versus mm -hmm. 3x for the replicated pool. So you've actually got a factor of two to work with there. Right.
And we could also and uh, um, the journal could the, the, the journal could actually probably be used on an electricity pool itself since it's all going to probably going to be append only, right? Yeah. So, that uh, as, long as, some application. All, as long as you're willing to append in all, aligned packets, then yes. Ah, it has to be aligned to the stripe size of the erasure code. Yeah, you can ask Yehuda, but we added something to Liberatos that tells you what the stripe, what what the required yep. alignment is for for a pool. So it's like zero property. for a yeah. replicated pool, then non-zero for anything where it's a real thing. Yep. So that could might be tolerable. We could certainly um, try to prototype it by you know padding to the stripe size. If we don't have enough data. Mm -hmm. I think for the journal though, you'd always want to use replicated because it's not a lot of not a lot of bytes, and you care about latency in that case. Yeah, you don't want the extra tail. Yeah, that's true. Plus, you could put the journal pool on something fast. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone have any sort of input? Like, I don't know if anyone's paying attention or has thought about actually using this in real life. Um, <laughs> half the main reason I wanted to have a session on this was to see if anyone had any opinions on or insight into anything they want to use it for that these don't really address or that one of these does address. Hmm. Bueller? Okay, worth a shot. Okay, I mean, I think that the thing that the thing that worries me is that this. This is sort of oft requested, but it's sort of in the in the general sense of I want to use EC for everything because it's more efficient, right? Um, and that's not very helpful. <laughs> right, that's what I'm afraid of. That's yeah. why I like the two-phase commit approach of these. Well, I like not doing it in the first place best, but yeah, the two-phase yeah. commit approach, if we are going to do it, has the advantage of being deterministic and predictable. Yep. Are there any other problems we would solve with having a two-phase commit? Not even at all. No. For the replicated pool, we just the the whole thing is well. Okay. No. If if we had a two-phase commit replicated pool, we lose the divergent object bug or the divergent object trade-off thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is you know a thing. So that would be nice. Yeah. Okay. You know, if you could reference a previous journal entry in the journal, then at least we could avoid. No, it's not worth it. I was thinking because you, you're writing the same extent to two different objects, hopefully close together in time. So if you knew that it was that the previous extent was still in the journal, you could reference it by yeah. unique ID. But no, there's no way to. There's yeah, no I mean, way to effectively. That effectively, that's what like the clone range type thing is doing. Just like take those. Well, no, that there. that would do it again. So. Um, Oh, I, I see what you mean. Yes, that's true. But the clone range one does kind of require an F sync. This only requires that the previous part of the journal not be changing, which is always true. You just have to choose not to trim it, which yeah. is the part that's probably impossible. Okay. Okay. So, winding table that one down until further notice, <laughs> I guess. Well, someone's probably going to have to volunteer to implement the two-phase commit, <laughs> or yeah, whatever, and or prototype a client-side approach we haven't thought of. Yeah. Isn't this where you volunteer Loic because he didn't show up? <laughs> but I don't know that it's going to be done. I, I I don't think it's a good idea to implement this unless we have someone willing to say, yeah. I am a driver for this thing, and I would consider it successful if it accomplished X with Y, you know, properties. Right. Yep, exactly. Otherwise, we're just implementing something which might or might not be useful just for someone, maybe. Yep, and it's easily abused. All right. Are we rolling uh, right? That was a half hour session. Oh, okay, that was half session. Yeah, that was half hour. So no okay. time for lunch then. <laughs> Is that all that? All for that one then? Mm -hmm. Excellent.